Okay, so in this video, what I'm going to be doing is just showing uh, or commenting on a quick video where a pastor was speaking to a congregation and he asked them a classic question, which it doesn't seem that many church people get asked. And that is, has anyone actually read through the Bible? So let's see what kind of a response he got when he asked that question. If you want a successful life, look the recipe here, look the answer here, then shall you meditate, start to meditate. The survey has shown that, hallelujah, out of a hundred Christians, only two probably read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Closing up, that tells, let that sink home deep, let that sink home deep tonight. Raise your hand if you make Genesis to Revelation once for once in your life. Raise your hand if you did Genesis to Revelation. You see one hand there. Tell me if this is something to be proud of. You call an, Islam, an Islamic little boy and he will tell Okay, before he gets into something which isn't quite true, notice what happened. He asked if anyone had read through from Genesis to Revelation. He said that, then he added once in a lifetime, because of course, you can't, you know, people aren't going to do it continuously because we do have slave jobs and stuff like that. But throughout your life, you're going to get a chance to do it at least once. I mean, that should be obvious. And he's saying only two people put their hands up. And maybe more people have read it, but this is a problem. So one of two things happened there. Either the congregation isn't listening to what he's saying, so they didn't realize what they were putting their hand up for. Or it was the case that the ones who did understand what he said, they really hadn't read everything in the Bible. So let, let me let, let me go, th go through the video, because there's a couple of other things that happened, and then I'll just comment on it at, at the end. Tell you that I read the Quran on diverse occasion. Yeah, and so the problem there is, okay, he's saying that a little Muslim boy read the Quran on diverse occasions. Problem is, yeah, you can read the Quran, but the Quran doesn't contain most of Islam in it, so reading the Quran doesn't help you. Or reading through the Quran doesn't help you that much. And he's learning to master the Quran. And also, just mentioning that yeah, a little boy can master the Quran, but the thing is, he might, he'll be taught to memorize, sorry, to master, be a master of memorizing it, not to understand it. That's, and that's important. And he will wrap you around his fingers because you know what? We don't spend time to read this. And that's true, what he's saying there. That there are, I'd say the majority of church people don't really read their Bibles and that's also a reason why the Muslims are doing so well against the Christians and it's not because the Muslims read their Quran no, it's because the Christians don't read their Bible that's what the big problem is Oh, this is boring the devil will tell you but next time you start reading from Genesis and you hear the word boring you rebuke the devil you tell the devil you're a liar in the name of Jesus his mission is to rob you from reading this Bible. If you, hallelujah, is transformed, he freed an individual that is transformed. The devil and his demon cohorts is afraid of any believer that is transformed by the renewing of their minds. And the thing you have to understand though, also is that when it comes to not reading the Bible, Bible the, the, one of the big things that stops you from reading the Bible, of course, is their phones, and the other thing is television, and of course the other thing is going to cinemas, etc. So those entertainments are there to stop people from, from reading their Bibles. Yes, sir. Yeah, so that black pause, that was just so I know when the video ends, and that we're on to the next one. So this is just the next clip where he's, he's continuing the same message, but if you just listen to what he says. And Goliaths in your lives. There are some Goliaths. Your husband might be a Goliath. Your job might be a Goliath. Your wife might be a Goliath. 
God have stones in the slingshot to throw them down. So now, it's, now someone who, who could take his words and like twist them around and say, oh, so if you've got a wife is a Goliath, you're supposed to take a stone and take her out. Well, yeah, Muslims, there's some Muslims who would have done something like that. But obviously, that's not something that a Christian would do. So I'm just saying that you should be aware of that, you know, how you interpret that. Because, of course, a person who's evil could interpret it in an evil way. The devil is a Goliath in your life, discouraging you everywhere you go. There are Goliaths in your life today. I can see it on your faces. There are Goliaths in your life today. Not the literal, tall, strong, big, giant looking guy, but there are discouragements. There are things that are keeping you back from renewing your mind today. Okay, so that's the end of that. So those are the two clips I took from that uh, sort of sermon that the guy gave at, at Halsden. And the majority of what I was watching didn't really have much in it. But the minute he got to this part, then exposed that congregation, showing how fake they are. I knew I had to make a comment on that. And so this this is... All right, so I'm just going to do these two Bible quotes and just finish this off. So this is the Psalm 1. And it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So that's TikTok on Facebook. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So obviously that's their psalm. It's the first psalm as well. So you, you're going to read this one, even if you get bored by the time you get to the fifth psalm or something. You're going to at least have read the first one. And so you'll know that, you'll know that it does say in his law, doth he meditate day and night. And it says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. They are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So we can see obviously what's going to happen to people who don't want to meditate in God's law day and night. And like that preacher was saying, you know, or was exposing the congregation, I should, I should say, that you can see how bad it is in the current church system. And don't think that what happened there isn't the same in other churches as well. And this is also why the Christians are doing so badly against the Muslims, because they don't actually even want to study their own books. So of course, Muslims can jump on them and surprise them with verses from the Bible. And then confuse them. And of course, some of the idiots will even become Muslims, even though Islam, the Quran is actually you know, a pretty horrible book, really, when, when you find out the truth about it. The next one is, so this is Joshua 1. And so I'm going to go from verse 6. It says, Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shall I divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Now, of course, the church will tell you that you shouldn't observe all the law, because they want you to just be slaves with the slave master. So verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart, out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make the way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So when churches come and tell you that, yo, the Lord's done away with it, guess what? Any pastor telling you that it means it's because they don't want you to have a way that's prosperous, and they do not want you to have good success. All they want you to do is to stay a good slave, and they pay them their tithes and offering, even though they're not Levites. So of course, they shouldn't get tithes. And also, as Jesus said, tithes is uh, the seed, those three seeds, something, something, and coming. So tithes, tithes is seed, according to Jesus. And they're not Levites anyway. And then also, they don't want you to read the book of the law 
so you don't have a prosperous way and have good success so this this shows you how bad these christian churches are and the fact that they don't even want you to read the bible so that you can have a bit of success shows you that most of these church pastors don't even like the congregation members anyway 